And I even remember when I was, you know, trying to get into business school and I was really struggling with my GMAT and I would literally go there and like wail and express this, things I couldn't even tell my friends to these people. Today I would say it was their encouragement, their support that really pushed me into getting into business school. So creating little communities that are outside of your norm is also, I think, very powerful. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Sassy Funke and I'm a Nigerian travel and lifestyle blogger and blogger. If it's your first time, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification button right beside it, down below. Don't also forget to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know that you really enjoyed the video and you want me to create videos like this in the future. So make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. This particular video is a response to a Snapchat question that I got from somebody yesterday. And the person said, you know, how do you handle stress when you're outside your country? Truth is, a lot of the time we think about travel as fun, as moving, you know, from Lagos to maybe London, from Lagos to the US, as if it's a fun thing. It can be a very exciting time in someone's life to move elsewhere, to explore new places. But I don't think enough people talk about how lonely it can be, how scary it can be, how just unsettling the whole process of moving and traveling at times can be. I think before I start, let me share with you guys a bit about my own experiences moving and traveling and the challenges I have around that in terms of being lonely and being scared. I'm going to be talking to you about also about how I combat that, how I overcome those feelings of fear, of doubt, those feelings of, you know, why am I here, those feelings of loneliness. And even now that I mean, everyone sees me, I'm in America, there are a lot of inner battles. I fight myself, you know, I miss Nigeria, I miss Lagos, I miss my family. And, you know, Instagram doesn't really show that, Snapchat doesn't really show that. There are ongoing battles that I have with myself, and I know many of you guys out there have too. To give you a bit of context about me, I left Nigeria for the first time. I was about a teenager, 14 years old. I moved to Scotland. I went to boarding school in Scotland. So I was away from my family, um, even though my brother was with me. Then I moved to London University. Then at one point, after I started working, I moved to New York. I moved back to London. Then I moved to France. And I think at all these stages, of life. It was very exciting because I love the prospect of moving, but there were a lot of moments where I felt like, oh, I have to make new friends. You know, I feel a bit lonely. How do I adjust? It's really tough. Like it's really tough, you know, being here, for example, making new friends. I don't think I have any new friend here, to be honest. I think I just talked to all my old friends and you, my, you YouTube people are my YouTube friends, but I've not really made any new friends here. I think my personality, because I'm so consumed by work and other things and projects I'm trying to do, that I don't really focus on it. But I can imagine a lot of people might feel a little bit depressed about it. Over the years, these are the things that I have done to really keep me motivated, to really keep me on top of my game and to really not let me get into a state of depression and feeling what is going on, what is up with life, you know? Um, these are my tips. Number one, I would say it's really important to get into a really good habit once you've moved somewhere. Like one of the things I did when I moved to, you know, when I was in the UK and I moved to London for the first time is I got a hobby, which was netball. I like playing sports. And the good thing about playing netball was that I was playing in my community te teams. I didn't know anybody there, but we had a common goal, which was netball. I used to look forward to it every Tuesday because I was like, okay, I'm gonna play netball with this group of people. Then we became friends. Then we'll go for the odd drink in the pub. Before you knew it, I'll see them on the streets. We'll hang out. And I think a lot of the time it's changing your habits of if something is not working for you, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling sad about something, stop doing what you're currently doing. Try something else. And for me, it was getting a hobby, which was great. And you can do hobbies like going to the gym. Just do hobbies that allows interaction with other people. Number two, one of the things I did when I went to London was I also joined um, a church, right? My church was Hillsong London, Tottenham Court Road. And I really like Hillsong because Hillsong has this homely feel to it. Beginning of every sermon on Hillsong, I remember they'll make you say hi to a few people around you. So everyone was very, just very open and willing to talk to you. One thing I did very quickly after joining Hillsong was actually join their connect groups. And connect groups were basically small groups that you meet weekly in someone's house for dinner and you talk about, you know, the Bible and God and things like that. It 
created another community for me. I'm going to groups and we'll talk about our challenges. It created a safe space for me to express how I felt about different things in life. And I even remember when I was, you know, trying to get into business school and I was really struggling with my GMAT and I would literally go there and like wail and express this, things I couldn't even tell my friends to these people. Today I would say it was their encouragement, their support that really pushed me into getting into business school. So creating little communities that are outside of your norm is also, I think, very powerful. Number three, I think moving to a new place it's important to find good friends, but find good people, maybe like-minded people. So a Nigerian moving into London, I'm not saying you should stick to only the Nigerian side, but sometimes that if you meet other Nigerians in London, you guys have shared the same struggle. You understand the context of what you're missing, you know, how you need to adjust. They can speak to you more. So I'd say find people from also your own communities back home and learn from them, learn about their struggles, ask them questions. I feel like we live in a society whereby a lot of us are like, we're struggling with something and we don't want to say it to other people. We're like, we want to look as if we're tough. Nothing wrong with you being vulnerable, with you sharing you know, your deepest fears with people, with you asking for help in your community. Try and find people like you. Finally, I would say if you're struggling with moving, um, struggling with adjusting. I think the internet has become such a powerful place, a powerful resource to find people that are experiencing what you are experiencing. Like go on YouTube. People talk about their struggles all the time, how they overcome it. Go and learn from the world. There's so much out there that can really help you. So guys, that is it. That is the end of my video. And it's very interesting for me to know what has been the challenges for you moving to a different country, traveling to a different country and adjusting. How have you dealt with the stress? Um, how have you dealt with the loneliness, you know, the sadness? Because we know we all go through it. Yes, we all go through it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up and I will see you on my next video tomorrow. Yeah. I love you. 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 I love you